Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have been out for a couple weeks now, and they are filled with so many difficult Pokemon to encounter. So today, I wanted to break down the top 10 rarest and hardest Pokemon to get in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. In this video, I'll be discussing Pokemon that are hard to obtain for a variety of reasons, such as their encounter rates, how hard they are to catch, or even the prerequisites in order to find these obscure Pokemon. If you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also be sure to let me know what Pokemon you found to be really rare or just plain hard to get. With that said, let's get started. At number 10, we have a Pokemon I'm sure a lot of people thought would rank higher on today's list. But because of how hard some of these mons are to find, number 10 is Rotom. Rotom is actually not very difficult to encounter in comparison to this list, because it's a static Pokemon. However, there are a couple of things you need to do first. One of the first things you need to do would be making sure you have the National Pokedex, which means you need to see the first 150 Pokemon in Sinnoh's Regional Pokedex. First things first, this number doesn't include Manaphy, which means you can actually do what's necessary through local play alone. Not only that, but these games make it possible to do this as soon as you've played through the Elite Four successfully. Even Dialga and Palkia can be found in the opposite version game thanks to a photo you'd find in Celestic Town, making this a very realistic encounter compared to others on today's list. Despite the regional Pokedex being easy enough to complete in Sinnoh, it's still definitely going to take a bit of work. If that wasn't enough, however, you also need to make sure that you're encountering it at night. This means you need to make sure your console is set between 8pm to 3.59am at the time of your encounter, or you will be out of luck. Changing your console's time can technically work for this, however, it will mess up all your other day and night events for a couple of days, so I wouldn't really endorse doing this. Rotom overall is just a rather tedious Pokemon to go about getting, making it number 10 on today's list. So up next on our list is going to be none other than the infamous Drifloon. Drifloon, I'm sure, is a Pokemon that has ruined a few of your guys' national Pokedex runs over the first week for launch. Seeing as I'm sure, plenty of trainers had to deal with the annoying encounter restrictions for this Pokemon. Drifloon is a Pokemon that you can only find on Fridays, which by itself really isn't too big of a deal. There are countless other Pokemon in this series, such as Lapras and HeartGold and SoulSilver, that are restricted to one day of the week. But what makes Drifloon special is what else you need to do in order to unlock it. See, the worst part about Drifloon's encounter is that while you're locked to Friday of all days while making this encounter take place at Valley Windworks, due to Drifloon's encounter restriction, you actually need to wait until the following Friday after beating Mars in order to find it at Valley Windworks. Because Valley Windworks is so early in your adventure, even finding this Pokemon at all becomes infinitely more difficult causing a ton of trainers to have to scramble at the last second to find someone with the Drifloon to fill their Pokedex space. I think Rotom's regular requirement is a bit harder, but the fact that most trainers probably didn't have to wait a full week again just to find Rotom makes me personally rate Drifloon right above Rotom at our number 9 slot. Our next entry is a Pokemon I'm sure several other players here have had the displeasure of trying to encounter being Combi. Combi is a Pokemon that is absolutely useless about 88% of the time. It's so bad that you could probably find a male Combi solo run in any game it's in with ease. It's just such a meme-worthy Pokemon at this point. So, female Combi, they have a very difficult 12.5% encounter rate and are the only combi that will actually evolve into Vespaquin. This means if your combi is male, you're either saving it for some sort of challenge run, or you're putting it in a box never to be used again. 
If this wasn't hard enough, it's actually extremely tiresome to find Combi. You need the Slather Honey on one of the 21 honey trees in Sinnoh, and it's also an uncommon Pokemon among these trees. Sitting at a 20% encounter rate, your combined odds of finding a female Combi at these honey trees is around 2.5%. You also have to wait 6 hours before you can even see if the honey tree was successful at finding a Combi, which adds in a very difficult time requirement. And even with the better chance of finding it in Sinnoh's Grand Underground, it's still going to be a very annoying Pokemon to try and get your hands on. My advice for this would honestly just be finding someone who can breed you a female Combi, because you're wasting your time finding this Pokemon, which is why Combi sits at number 8. Lucky number 7 today is our first group entry, but the reason for it is because their encounter is the exact same. We have at number 7 the Pokemon exclusive the Trophy Garden. If you didn't know, Trophy Garden has a few Pokemon such as Porygon, Eevee, Plusle, and Minin, and many others that you can only actually find in the post game at Trophy Garden. These actually have a 5% encounter rate, and they just require you having the National Dex. As we mentioned before, in comparison to other Pokemon games, this is actually a fairly reasonable regional Dex to complete. So, if these are all 5% to find, why do they rank so high on the list? The big problem with the Trophy Garden Pokemon comes from how every single day you're only able to encounter two Pokemon you'll always find one specific Pokemon that Mr. Backlock mentions, as well as the one he mentioned the previous day at any given time for 5% each. The issue though is that every day these will change in order of their national Pokedex number. So if you wait two days too long, you're going to have to wait just over two weeks in order to find Porygon again if that was the Pokemon you were looking for. This makes the Trophy Garden encounters responsible for some of the longest wait times of any Pokemon in these games, landing them at number 7 on today's list. Wrapping up our first half of the list is a Pokemon that is extremely well known for being difficult to get. In BDSP, this Pokemon is very difficult not only to catch, but also to even find in the first place, being Beldum. Beldum is one of our Swarm Pokemon, which basically function as higher encounter variants of our Trophy Garden Pokemon. These Pokemon are on random routes with a 40% encounter rate 24 hours. The issue being, however, unlike the Trophy Garden, these seem to actually be completely random in terms of what Pokemon you'll find on any given day. This means finding Beldum among the list of 28 Pokemon is pretty tedious already. If they didn't make it hard enough, let's not even get into how difficult Beldum would be to actually obtain. Going for Beldum means you need to obtain your National Dex, as well as complete the first 7 wins at the Battle Tower. While this isn't hard in itself, it's more so just adding on to how complicated this Pokemon is to even find. After this, you can make your way to the resort area, and onwards to Route 228, where you'll actually have access to the route Beldum is located on. Beldum also has a pretty low catch rate of 3. This puts Beldum above even Dialga and Palkia in terms of catching difficulty. However, at least they finally stopped it from damaging itself with takedown this gen. Sadly though, Beldum will be a Pokemon you'll have to put in a lot of effort to even find in the first place. But it's a very rewarding Pokemon to obtain, to say the least. All these factors land Beldum at number 6 on today's list. Opening up the top 5 is our next joint entry on today's list, coming from Sinnoh's two infamous roaming legendaries, Mesprit and Cresselia. Both of these Pokemon are very difficult to even make appear at your location, as the area you'll find them changes every time you change locations on your map. You can, however, actually manipulate this, by going back and forth between a route and town until you find its location on your map. You only have one turn to catch these Pokemon, however, or they will flee and you'll have to encounter them again. These Pokemon at first sound like they should be at the top of our list. However, unlike higher options, there are strategies you can use to alleviate this. For example, if you bring a mean look Pokemon faster than these, you can actually use it in order to trap them while you throw Pokeballs at them. The best choice here would probably be a Murkrow in my opinion 
due to the fact you'll have access to mean look, roost, and the dark typing, meaning you'll have the best chances of trapping these two psychic types for as long as possible. You can even teach it Thunder Wave for a status option in order to make catching both easier. So this, in my opinion, is the most ideal mean look user you could utilize for this encounter. I still think, despite the mean look or shadow tag route, that these Pokemon are obnoxious to even locate in the first place, which would be why I have them at number five on today's list. Next up on today's list is the Sinnoh Reggie being Regigigas. Regigigas actually has a rather mundane catch method in comparison to others on this list. You just need to catch all the Regis and bring them to the temple in Snowpoint City. The only problem with this is that the only way to do this currently is by catching the three Titan Pokemon first. Legendaries already are more difficult Pokemon to obtain. So having to catch three just to encounter Regigigas is pretty difficult. To make matters worse, to get the Regis, you need access to Ramanas Park. I'll get into Ramanas Park later into the video a bit more, but you need nine mysterious shards, which you can find in the underground, in order to buy the three slates that you need to encounter Regi Rock, Regi Steel, and Reg Ice. These shards are very rare items to find, but at least that's arguably the hardest part about this. It's mostly just an additive encounter to everything before this, because like Pokemon, such as Rotom or Beldum, you'll need the national decks to access Ramanas Park. So this isn't even anything new for you if you made it this far in the video. Their catch rates are actually rather tame compared to Pokemon such as Beldum, but I still think that all the prerequisites to even unlock your Regigigas encounter keep it at our fourth place on today's list. Our third place on today's list is probably one of the most infamously difficult encounters from the original Sinnoh games being Spiritomb. Spiritomb is a Pokemon that requires you to utilize the Grand Underground function, which seems to be common among a few of our top contenders on today's list. You'll need to place your odd keystone at the Crumbled Tower on the route right before Salaceon Town, and then talk to 32 unique NPCs in the Underground. The issue is how difficult these NPCs are to actually locate. Because of the fact you can't actually talk to real trainers, this means you'll need to find where all these NPCs are located. The problem is, the location of each trainer is randomized to a few locations. There is a specific place you can actually drop into though, with the chance of finding every single trainer, being Ouroburg City. If you go to the underground here, the route you spawn on will have a giant square where you can go in and out of the rooms in order to find the unique NPC to your current path. Orberg's underground square has a small chance of finding every NPC in the underground, however, whereas most other routes have a chance of about one to five different NPCs. If you want more info, I recommend checking out Austin John Play's video on this, as he explains it in far greater detail. This process takes several hours of actively playing, but if you put in the time, you can find yourself a spirit tomb. So surely you can see why it deserves to be in the top three. The penultimate Pokemon, as hinted at earlier in the video, are none other than the Ramanas Park cover legendaries and Mewtwo. These Pokemon are basically just a more difficult version of finding the Regis, because you need to find specific Pokemon prior to each encounter. For example, if I want to find Ho-Oh, I need to encounter Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Latias, Latios, Regirock, Registeel, and Regice before even getting a chance to encounter Ho-Oh. This means I need to find the mysterious shards for all of these slates as well as Ho-Oh slate. There's not really a lot to discuss for these Pokemon that I haven't already mentioned, but it's basically like a significantly harder version of Regigigas' encounter because you'll need to find more legendaries on top of the Regi Trio, with the amount depending on which legendary you're aiming to encounter. With this in mind, we'll place Ramanas Park's legendary encounters at number two on today's list. Finally, our number one encounter is probably the hardest encounter to even locate in any given Pokemon game. 
being none other than Milotic. Milotic has a chain of difficult points in this encounter, whether we go over the encounter itself or the evolution method in these games. Starting with how you even find Milotic, you need to go into the surf room of Mount Coronet on the way to Snowpoint City and fish using a good rod. From here, there is a random collection of four tiles that will have any chance at all of finding a Feebas. So you'll have to find these through painstaking effort. There shouldn't be any way to actually locate these other than trial and error. So hopefully you'll get lucky with this part and actually find your Feebas tiles quickly. From here, you also have to worry about evolving Feebas into Milotic. Since the prism scale is no longer a factor, we're back to maxing your beauty stat out. You'll have to bake lots of poffins in order to do this, which means you should find a massive amount of Oran berries. Oran berries should allow you the easiest way to make poffins that will boost your beauty stat. So just mix poffins until you do so. Next, you'll need to level up Feebas once in battle, and then you'll finally have a Milotic. Between all these factors, I think that Milotic is arguably the hardest Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Well, that's my list of the top 10 rarest and hardest Pokemon to obtain in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. What did you think of the Pokemon I covered today? And did you think there were any difficult encounters I missed? Be sure to let me know in the comments below if you felt there were any Pokemon that made you struggle far more than these. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Hey hey guys, thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all of this without them. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.